we're going to find the volume of this shape uh, with equilateral cross-section triangles. Okay, so first we have to find the area of the, the, the equilateral triangle. Do you guys know how to find the area of an equilateral triangle? Um, let's see, let's write some stuff. Uh, if I have an equilateral triangle, that's not an equilateral triangle. Okay, that's, that's close. Okay, you guys know that to find the area of a triangle, it's one half base times height? Okay, so it's, uh, we'll call this the base, and this would be your height right here. All right, we have to find um, the base and the height. Okay, so one half base times height. Uh, <clears throat> before we try to um, find out what the base is, I first want to write the, the height and the base um, with one variable. I don't want to have two variables. I want to write the height as, as like the base. So what is the height in terms of B? How do we write the height in terms of B? Okay, hmm. Okay, we know that area equals one half base times height. So how do I write the height in terms of B? Ooh, ooh, what do we know about an equal out triangle? We know that this is 60 degrees, right? And then, and then what is the angle of this, that one right there? That I just split in half. That's 30 degrees. Okay, so we have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Oh, am I pulling up old information out of your brain? No? Does it hurt? Okay, so, so how are we going to find the H? We know that this right here, this, just this section, is one half of B. Okay, so I got B over 2. So what would H be if this side is half of B? B over 2 sine 60. Ooh. Do you guys remember your uh, special triangle? Sorry, I know some of you guys know the answer, but I want to make sure everybody's with us. If this is 60, this would be, uh, we'll call this uh, N. Uh, this side would be rad 3N, or N rad 3, and this side would be 2N. Um, do you guys remember doing that at all? No. no. Okay, so this is our special triangle. So if this side is N, this side would be the same thing, but multiplied by rad 3. So what is my H? It is B over 2 times rad 3, which can be written a different way. We can write it as B rad 3 over 2, or we can say rad 3 over 2 times B, whichever way you want to say it. It's all the same. So that means I can rewrite this. I don't have to say B times H anymore. I can say... 1 half times B times red 3 over 2 times B, which can also be simplified. What can that be simplified to? Red 3 over 4 B squared. So here is our area in terms of B. So when I lay, I lay, um, I lay the solid uh, upright like this. So right now we're looking down on the solid. You see these lines and you know that these lines are the bases they're the bases of our equilateral triangle right there okay and you guys remember um how to find the area of this base what was it again red three over four b squared b squared okay so that if i just know this base the value of this b then i can find the area of the triangle okay so let's just look at one line how would we find the, the length of this one line right here? We know that this curve is defined by y equals plus r squared minus x squared uh, because of this, right? Okay. What, what is um, our r right now? It is 2. So I just put in a 2 right there. How come it's plus? How come it's not the negative? The negative gives you the second part. Okay? So I'm not talking about the negative right now. So this right here, uh, the square root of 2 squared minus x squared, that would give me the length from here to here. The only. That would give me the length from there to there. But how do I get both the lengths? Yeah, we can do the negative also, but the advantage here is you guys know that the second half of it is going to be double Equal. that, right? So can I just multiply by 2? Yeah. Okay, so let me simplify this a little bit. I'm going to say 
and actually we don't want y anymore. We want to say b equals, that's the length of it. Uh, y is just considering one half of it. b equals two times the square root of four minus x squared. So this function defines the b. Wow, we just reached the second platform on our journey to find the volume of this solid. The first platform was finding the area of the cross section with one variable. The next platform is finding, the, uh, finding out how to find the length of that volume. So how will we find the, the, vo the, the area of every single cross section and add them together? And this is when we use the integral. The integral of this formula, right, 3 over 4 times b squared. And what is b? Two. b is 2 right. square root of 4 minus x squared, dx. And so from what x to what x are we using to find the volume of the solid? Negative 2 to, two. Negative two to positive 2. That will give you the volume of the shape. We're going to pause from our concept, our new concept, which is finding the volume using cross sections. And I just want you guys to simplify this integral to see if it's something easily derived. Okay, here we go. I'm going to first square this. I'm going to square that. So that's going to be, uh, I'll have the square root of 4 chilling out in front. And then I have a 4 times. 4 minus x squared. The squared is gone. The square root is gone. This 4, when it multiplies to this fraction, cancels out the denominator. And now what I have is a red 3 in front, going from negative 2 to 2, of 4 minus x squared dx. That's not that bad. That's totally doable. Okay. Let's uh, do the antiderivative of it. Okay, so we get 4, well, I'm going to put my red 3 out in front, times 4x minus 1 over 3x to the third. And then I'm going to plug in negative 2 and positive 2. So if I plug in positive 2, I get red 3 times, uh, that's going to be at 8 minus positive 2 raised to the third is going to be an 8. So I have 8 over 3 minus, and I'm going to put parentheses around this guy, negative 2 plugged into the 4 is going to be a negative 8. Then negative 2 plugged into this is also going to be a negative 8. Like, uh, yeah, but then that's going to go positive because we're subtracting a negative. Um, notice I'm not paying attention to this rad 3. I'm leaving him out until the very end. I'm going to do all this simplifying stuff in here. So I'm going to distribute this negative. Now this 8 over 3 is back to negative. And uh, it looks like we get 16 uh, minus 16 over 3. Okay, and then um, let's make uh, this have a denominator of 3. 16 times 3. Uh, 3 times 6 is 18 is 48. And so I got 48 minus 16. That would be... 32 over 3, and I have to multiply it by rad 3. That equals 32 rad 3 over 3. Uh, that doesn't simplify to be anything pretty, so I'm just going to leave it like that.